All right, so let's talk about evaluating definite integrals using new substitution. I'm going to, well, okay, so let's find, I'm going to propose this question here. Capital A, the answer is this integral from zero to two of x e to the x squared dx. It sounds like the, the bad problem that was impossible to do, but this one actually is possible, okay? And re the reason is, if you remember, I um, asked earlier what the integral is for e to the x squared dx, and the answer was you can't. There is no simple answer to that question. But thanks to this x, which makes the problem look a little more complicated, that problem, that x actually helps us tremendously. It comes to the rescue, okay? Be thanks to that x, because of that x, we can do this problem using u substitution. And here's the way uh, it goes. Actually, uh, let's go ahead and um, look at this indefinite integral. Okay, so this is the question that I'm going to come back to, right? But I'm going to first do the uh, indefinite integral without worrying about uh, zero and two. Right, so the u substitution is going to be x squared, u is x squared, then du is 2x dx. Right, I don't have 2, but I can dream about 2. And when you wish upon the star, um, everything will come true. And so you can just dream that there is a 2 here. And of course, as long as you divide everything by 2 outside, this is fine, I didn't do anything illegal, right? So you have two x dx, you can see that here. Somehow I'm using the pink ink for that, right? So this is e to the u du with a one half outside of this, which is one half e to the u plus c. And because I am using, well, u, I have to go back to the world of x. All right, this is a pretty simple, um, antiderivative, right? Okay, so with this, now we can simply solve for this. So this turns out to be one half <coughs> x e to the c, uh, sorry, e to the x square, and then plus c, you can ignore this when you are finding the definite, definite integral, right? Because you subtract um, this at uh, b, I mean, evaluate this at b two, minus this evaluated at zero, and if you have a plus C in both of them, they just cancel out. So you can just go ahead and pick any antiderivative, in particular, let C be equal to zero. And this is your solution. Uh, let's take out one half outside. This is E to the two square minus E to the zero square. And remember, E to the zero square is not zero. So there is, a, uh, there is something in there. You can just cancel uh, the bottom. Uh, term all the time. All right, so this is e to the fourth minus what's e to the zeroth? Yeah, that's one, all right? So that's the answer to this question, all right? So you say, what's so hard about this? Okay, well, uh, notice here, I went back to the world of x because I was trying to solve this as an indefinite integral problem, okay? And then I plugged in those numbers here. That's okay, but there's a better way which I am going to show you. Remember, the whole idea is you started with the world of X, you move to the world of U where the problem is simplified, you solve it. And once you find the solution in terms of U, you throw it back to the world of X and you say, hey, here is your solution. Uh, and so that is possible. But if you're evaluating uh, the indefinite integral in the world of U, there is a way to not have to go back to the uh, world of X. So let's go ahead and do this. Remember, I have to solve this, by the way, right? So A, I have to solve this using U substitution. This is what you do. Let U be X squared as before. DU, of course, becomes two X DX, right? And of course, uh, you can think of this as one half, uh, one over two, and then two. You know, this helps you visualize where dx is. dx is, of course, as I did before, it's this, right? <clears throat> so just as before, this is one half. And then at this point, I'm going to not write anything for the upper and lower limits, okay? All I'm going to say is this is e to the u, du, just like before, 
no problem here. That's exactly what I had before. But because now I have moved from X to U, right? I have moved away, I have grown from X to U. So now I don't wanna go back to X. And in fact, you can just evaluate everything in terms of or in the world of U. So what is that? Well, when X is equal to zero, you look at, pay attention to this substitution. When X is zero, what's U? That's zero. But X goes from zero to two. Now, when X is two, what's U? It's square of the X, so that's four, okay? So actually, you can rewrite this whole thing as one half of the integral of E U D U as U, not X, U goes from zero to four. And so that is our new integral. You see how nice it is, how much nicer it is? You don't have to ever go back to the world of u. So this is e, uh, sorry, one over two, e to the u, evaluating at zero and four and finding the difference, which of course is one half e to the fourth minus e to the zero, which is one, uh, one half e to the fourth minus one. And of course that is the same, uh, same answer as this before. And so that is correct. And there, that's why I said there is a better way. And I highly recommend that you do this as opposed to going back to the X and substitute. The only, only tricky part is to make sure you get the right upper and lower limits. Because if you, if you forget this, and if you use the old you know, um, limits, zero and two, then of course your answer would be completely off. And so you don't wanna do that. But that's very simple. And as long as you remember to do these changes, a conversion from X to U values, then you will be just fine, okay? So let's do a couple more uh, exercises and as examples. All right, another example. Let's evaluate the integral from zero to one of X squared, cosine of pi over two, X cubed, man, this looks complicated. Where did that come from? Um, I think it came from uh, a problem in the book, okay? You, uh, you see an interior or inside function? Yeah, you do, it's pi over two X cubed, all right? So then the U will be ooh, pi over two times three X squared DX. I don't see that, not to worry. I will see it. If I look really carefully with prayer and supplication, uh, what, what, where is this whole thing here? Well, that's three pi over two there. Now you see it, right? Okay. See, this is a freedom you have as a mathematician. You can just create something as long as you make a little adjustment. And it doesn't cost you anything to create something, you know, like in, uh, in, in the field of engineering. And so, but that, and by the way, this is really the cleverness or the um, the create the creativity required and wanted in the uh, in solving math mathematics problems. Okay, so something like this we do all the time, right? You add and subtract um, to uh, come up with an equivalent algebraic uh, expression. Uh, if you need this, go ahead and just throw it in there. Just make sure you make the adjustment and legal legal adjustment. Okay, so this is two over three pi. Okay. And again, I'm going to leave the integral, uh, the limits of integration here. Uh, what I have now is, do I have du? The du is this whole thing, okay? All right, so uh, what's left is cosine of u, du. Wow, it's just so much simpler and so much nicer. Okay, now um, I refuse to go back to the world of x. So let's try to figure this out. If X is zero, now remember X goes from zero to one. So I have to evaluate U at these points. If X is zero, plug in zero here and you get zero, oh, U is zero. If X is one, then this is pi over two, all right? So this is, now remember, I have started to use U here, so I cannot put X values in here, but I can put the U values in here. So here is my new definite integral which is the solution to the original question. No longer would I be required to go back to the world of u. All right, so this cosine of course is sine of u. I mean, the integral of cosine is sine of u plus c, but again, c can be ignored. 
So this is two over pi, two over pi, three pi. And then what sign of pi over two? One, okay? Uh, hopefully you can do that without using your calculator. Sign of 90 degrees is equal to one. That's the Y value of this point. And then minus sign of zero, you should know as zero. The answer, two over three pi. Cool. Nice, right? <clears throat> okay. I'm going to um, close this by uh, introducing to you one of the um, nicest um, use of um, the, the, the use substitution, okay? This um, integral, and I'm, this is going back to an indefinite integral. I am not going to plug in numbers here or uh, give you numbers. So this is an indefinite integral. At this point, so far you have not seen cosine square theta, right? Do you know any function whose derivative is cosine square theta? And the chances are you probably do not. Okay, so how, what's the, do we have, do we have any tools um, that you can use to solve this problem? And the answer is, well, we do know something about cosine square. Uh, where do I know about cosine square? Well, we, we have a, a double angle formula for cosine and we have one for sine too, but the one with cosine has cosine squared in it, right? So cosine of square uh, two theta, the first one you learned was probably this cosine square minus sine square. Okay, and that is a double angle formula. There are three double angle formulas. But from this, another one you can come up with is just obtained by uh, replacing sine square with one minus cosine square, which is based on that uh, most famous trig identity, which is sine squared plus cosine squared is forever going to be equal to one, right? So when you do this, you, um, of course, negative times uh, negative and negative makes it positive. So you have two of these cosine square terms. So this is another one of those um, double angle formulas for cosine. But watch if you um, solve, if you move one to the other side, and switch the uh, sides, this is what you get. But you see this trig identity, identity actually helps us rewrite cosine square as one plus cosine two theta over two. Okay, well, that's nice. Why is it so nice? Well, because I think we know how to integrate this. We couldn't integrate this, right? So again, this is uh, the cleverness that somebody decided to use or to apply in solving a, a question like this. Um, my hat's off to whoever came up with this because that is a very elegant, perhaps creative way of solving this, right? Instead of cosine square, which we don't know how to integrate, we can just rewrite this as one half plus cosine two theta over two. In fact, why don't we just take the two outside, uh, the, you know, one half, okay, because then, we don't have one half here. It's one half times the integral of one plus cosine two theta d theta. And this is something we can handle or you can handle. Uh, one just becomes theta, right? <clears throat> so that's fine. Uh, oops, that is not that. Uh, okay, so let's think about Cosine of theta, because this is what we have, right? Uh, sorry, cosine of two theta. All right, so uh, is there a way to do this? Sure, I mean, you can now use u substitution. Uh, u is two theta, du is two theta, d theta, okay? Do you see uh, two theta, d theta? No, you don't, but just, stare at this for a while and you can start seeing the two. And as long as you divide it by two, you're okay. And so now you um, find your du, which is two d, uh, I'm sorry, this is two, wow. Okay, if u is two theta, du is two d theta. That's all you need, right? So two d theta is here. So this is one half um, integral of u cosine of two theta times two d theta, which is du. So this becomes one half times one half 
u square plus c, right? And so that is what you see here. Uh, I'm sorry, that's just not correct. So I need to go back and fix my problem here. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to correct and re record everything because sometimes these things happen, right? Um, you know, you, when you, when you, um, when you lack concentration or something, then uh, you just make silly mistakes. All right, so I, my u was not cosine of two theta. That was a problem. Uh, my u was two theta. So what you have here is one half and then cosine of two theta is basically cosine of u, right? And then two d theta, is, I'm sorry. Yeah, two d theta is now, now du. So this is what I get from the, um, the definite, uh, indefinite integral of cosine of two theta. The answer then is what? Uh, cosine, well, you know, if you are integrating cosine, you just get sine of u plus c, right? So with this substitution and the result in mind, oh, by the way, I really should write this as one half sine of two theta plus c, because I was in the world of theta and now I moved to the world of u. And, but now, since this is an indefinite integral, okay, I have to use theta in my, answer, right? So uh, let's go back to this. I had this, so it's one half, and then you have one becoming theta, and then the integral of cosine of two theta is now this, one half times sine of two theta, okay? And then of course, plus C, that just is a combination of this part and this part, you just combine them into one uh, constant. All right, so the answer to this question is this one half theta, plus one fourth sine two theta plus C. All right, let's go ahead and write this down um, as a new formula, right? So the antiderivative or cosine square theta of D theta, the antiderivative or a def indefinite integral of cosine square theta turns out to be one half theta plus one fourth sine two theta plus C. This is not something you would have expected, right? But um, you should verify this at the end of this video, you can stop the video and then you try to differentiate this, okay? If you differentiate this, you get one half plus, and then uh, you will see that this is going to just give you something which is going to be equivalent to this, which is cosine square. And so that's how you can get this to uh, work. All right, so I hope you have seen how wonderful the uh, method of use substitution is. And now you practice this a few dozen times to master this new skill.